Hello everyone, and welcome to ECS 36B. I know you're interested in getting programming, but before we do, we gotta get you set up. And this is exactly what this video was designed to do. This video is for getting set up on Windows, so if you're watching for Mac or Linux, make sure to check out those other videos that are specifically for your system. So what do we need to get? We need to get two things. We need to get our build tools, and we need to get an editor. Our build tools are what's going to uh, allow us to take our source code and turn it into an executable. And for that, we're going to be using Sigwin. And we need an editor, which is just something to write our code in. So to get Sigwin, you are going to want to go to this link right here. And you are going to want to select the setup x8664.exe uh, for your computer. So you would go ahead and click that and it's going to show up in your downloads. Somewhere probably in here. Um, I won't recommend running your uh, setup.exe in here. Um, I recommend first moving it to a location where you're gonna be able to find it later because the setup program is what's used to actually update uh, Sigwin um, as well as to get it installed in your system. So for me, I've placed my setup over here in Sigwin installer. So now we want to go ahead and run our installer. Select yes to allow it to install. And go ahead and open the installer, click next here. We want to install from the internet the default option. We want to install it somewhere. Again, I'm gonna recommend that you do not install this in the um, default directory. Or if you do, make sure that you pay really close attention to what this path is because you're going to need to find it again later uh, on in the video to get finished setting up. So I've placed mine over here in program Sigwin64. So click next. For the local package directory, you can probably just leave it as its default, but if it doesn't default to the directory where you place your Sigwin installer, change it to that. We want to use system proxy settings. And then it's gonna fetch for us a bunch of mirrors um, if you're over here in California, you're going to want to select mirrors.sonic.net, uh, the HTTP one. But if you're not over here in California, you can find a list of the mirrors over here at sigwin.com slash mirrors.html. And they'll tell you where out in the world each one of these mirrors is at, and you want to select the one that's closest to you. So for us here in California, mirrors.sonic.net. And it's gonna go download some update information. And now over here in the view, you are want to, go, to want to go to the uh, not installed category, not the pending category. And then there's a set of packages that we're going to need to install. The set of packages that we need to get for this class are these ones that are listed here on the slides and the link to these slides will be in the description down below so you need to get cmake gcc core gcc g gdb git lib mp4r or fr4 lib n curses devel make and lib gcc pp1 so you would just search each one of their names in here so for me to actually have them show up i need to go to full because i already had them installed so I'd search something like CMake, and I already have it, but if you wanted something uh, that you don't have installed, which you won't, you'd want to go down to Skip, and instead of selecting Skip, you're going to want to select the most up-to-date version. For example, for this CMake debug info, it would be 3.6.2-1, so you would select that. The bin will automatically be selected, which is the only one you need. You don't need to select the source. So go through and select all of those. And again, you're eventually going to end up with this set of files here, minus boost. Boost is for my own personal use. So you go and select all those things, click Next. It will tell you all the things that it wants to install. It should also have an option down here for like installing dependencies. You do want to make sure that option is checked, that you do want to install dependencies. Click Next. It will go ahead and download everything which might take a little bit longer than this, but for me, it should be fairly quick because I'm not installing anything. Um, and then select to add an icon on the desktop or add an icon to the start menu. I already have an icon on the desktop, so I'm gonna skip this part right here. 
but for you, make sure that at least one of these is clicked so that you're able to actually locate SIGWIN later on to be able to run it. Clicking Finish, we now have it installed, but we are going to need to add it to our path. To do that, go down into the search bar and type in path. You should get this option to edit the system environment variables, so click on that. Then we need to go down to environment variables. And then we want to go down to path. That's the one that we're planning on changing. And then we want to edit it. So since we're adding something new to our path, which in this case we want to add are the SIGWIN directories as well as the SIGWIN's binary directories, we want to make sure that we click new first. Make sure you're not clicked on one of the uh, environment or the values in the path variable already. So click off that just to make sure and click on new. And then click browse. And now we want to go find where we've installed SIGWIN at. This is why it was really important to remember our location as to where we installed it at. So for me, I put mine over here in the data drive and I put it under programs and then I put it in SIGWIN64. So I click this and then say OK. Then again, I would do that again and do new. And then click browse, go back to where SIGWIN's at is again for me under programs, SIGWIN64, click bin, click OK. And now that your path has been updated, you would say OK. And now you should be good and set up with SIGWIN. The next thing that we need to do is get uh, C-Line, which we'll talk about in just one minute. OK, now that our computers have restarted, it's time to open up C-Line. So find the shortcut on your desktop and open it up. And since you probably haven't ever installed C Lion B, um, in the past, select Do Not Import Settings. It should be the only option that you have. Then choose your preferred theme. I like light. Then go to Next. Um, at this point, uh, C Lion should be able to locate your tool chain to use for building, your make, your C compiler, your C compiler, and your debugger. So we're going to wait here for a second to double check that uh, C-Line is indeed able to find all those things. Uh, if C-Line isn't able to find them automatically, we're going to have to manually point uh, C-Line to each one of these applications. But great, we don't have to do that. It found them all. So we'll go for default plugins. Um, by default, all of these um, should say to install all. And we do want all of them, so just click Next for Featured Plugins. And for your Featured Plugins, you probably want to install all of them except for the idea of Vim. Um, if you like Vim and you've used Vim in the past and you want a Vim experience inside C-Line, go ahead and install it. But for everybody else, don't click on that one because it's probably going to make your life really terrible because it has a very different way of interacting with the editor than you're probably used to. So now that we have everything installed, click Start Using C Lion, and it should open up. Now, sometime during the course of you using C Lion, it's probably going to ask you to verify uh, your installation. Um, if it doesn't, or if you just want to do it manually, you can go down here to Configure, and you can click Manage License. And then you can enter your JetBrains account information and it will um, be linked to your JetBrains account and it'll make your subscription active so you'll have a uh, full license for using the product and it won't keep reminding you or deny you some access to some of the features. Um, but just to double check that everything is going to be working okay, we're going to just run a simple Hello World project. So we'll click on New Project and we're going to make this a C executable. So we'll click on C executable. Make sure that you choose executable and not library. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be able to run. For our standard, we're going to select the, the 2011 standard. And then we're going to need to save it somewhere. Uh, there will be some default project directory to save things. Again, I'm not going to recommend that you use this one. You're going to want to select your own location for your projects so that you know where to find them and they're easier for you to locate. So I'm going to go to my D drive and I have my C line programs. 
So inside C Lion programs, I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder uh, Hello World. And select OK. Select OK again. This is the directory where your project is going to be placed. We say create. And we wait a second. Now, C Lion is always a bit slow about getting things up and running uh, the very first time that you load a project. So you're going to have to wait a little bit until the processes down here are finished running. Um, but once it finishes loading our CMake project and you know developing all the, the symbols and loading them all and saving them, uh, you should be able to run it. And you should eventually see that this green arrow up here um, becomes uh, playable. It should probably happen before the, the symbols are finished building. So we'll go ahead and we'll click play. And it's going to build our project. So we wait for that to happen. And then you can see that Hello World printed out. So everything's set up and good to go, and everything's running. Um, and so you're all set up. One thing that I do recommend that you probably check out are your settings. Reaching them in Windows is going to be File and then Settings. But I believe in uh, Mac, you have to click the little Apple and then go to Settings. And then you're probably going to want to change some things around with the editor. I like my font a little bit bigger. So I like 18 point font uh, just to help me see a little bit. And then I also recommend that you go underneath the code style and C++ style. And then we're going to want to set from a predefined style. And we're going to use Google style. Or if you have another style that you like, you can go ahead and change things. There's also some other things that I like to change around with the spaces and the blank lines. Um, for example, I like to go under spaces and it's down here. And I like my spaces after my stars in my declaration. And it should pop you down to the area where this change is going to be made. And it should update it, but it still might not happen because it's still, you can see, loading in the background. I also like my uh, spaces after my ampersand in the declaration and not before it. These things are all personal preference for what you like. Um, so go ahead and just play around with things to see what looks best to you. And then I will see you in class for when we actually start going through how to program in C and C++. See you then.